Praise God. Good morning, KCM. It's an honor to be with you guys again today. And I just want to say I give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And we're going to finish up today uh, our topic on Father Knows Best. Father Knows Best. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Oh, Heavenly Father, huh? Almighty God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Most High God, the God above every God, the King of kings. In the name of Jesus, we come to you. Lord, I come to you this morning asking that you forgive me. Forgive us as a nation. Forgive us as a people. Forgive us, Lord, as a world. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray this day, Father, that those who are listening, those, Lord God, who are on their knees, for those who are praising you, for those who are standing in the gap, for those who are on the wall, for those who are dreaming, for those who are interpreting, for those who see, but Father, for those who are truly repenting, those who are turning to you, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you hear our prayer. Uh, well, Father God, we, we are calling out and crying out to you this day that you forgive us of all sin and transgressions that we have committed against thee. Create in us, Lord God, a clean heart and renew a right and steadfast spirit in us. Take not, take not thy precious Holy Spirit, thy, take not thy Ruach Kodesh away from us, God. Take it not away from us, Lord. Leave us not, Lord, in the condition that we are in. Lord God, just, just forgive us, God. We have sinned against you. For we know, God, that we can't do nothing without you. There's no where we can go. Where can we go, Abba? You are yet there. And we say forgive us of all sin and transgression. And Father, we know that you are Abba, Father. You are our Father. You, mm, you watch over us even when we don't even know that we'll be able. You yet sees us. And we thank you. For we are your children. We are your church. We are your people, God. And you promise you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, but some in these days think you have left, but you have not left us. Uh -huh. Hey, you are sovereign God. You are holy God. You are uh, You are a righteous God. Who you are faithful God, but you are a just God. And we thank you, sir. And now, Lord, as I stand before you, Father God, most of all, Lord, and your people who are listening and hearing, Lord, I pray that you open up our ears to hear, Father. Open up our eyes to see and open our heart to receive what you are speaking. Not what Mitchell want, God, but what you are speaking to your church. What you are speaking, Lord God, to those, Lord God, who are coming and running after you. Touch them now, God. In the name of Jesus. For we thank you for the shifting, Lord God. We thank you for what you're doing. Yes, even in the earth, we said, God be thou glorified. We love you and we adore you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we come. Amen. Mm, hallelujah. We're going to finish up on Father Knows Best. And just to give you a little brief uh, uh, talking about what we talked about on last, and this is part two, and I'm going to finish up the day. I, I, that's what I say, but I believe that God has allowed me to finish up the day. And if I don't, I'm going to give you some scriptures that you can study out the word of God yourself. Please study it because that's what he's calling us to. He said, you study the word to show thyself approved. Amen. So we have to study the word of God. He is speaking to us, church. He's speaking to us. You know, the ultimate of understanding uh, God is that we have to know that God is in control. He's in control. There's nothing that can go on in the earth, in our lives, in our homes, on our job that God do not know about. He is in control. But our topic is, and I'm going to finish up today, is that because he's in control, we need to understand that Father knows best. And if we get nothing else, nothing else, he's yet in control. He's our Father. And the Word of God said we can come.
come to him. And he knows best because he knows what you have need of even before you ask. That's his word. We talked about how the Lord is speaking to his people. We talked about when we are speaking to God's people and that word that he has given us for, for edification and encouragement yet admonishment. A lot of times we don't want to hear it. I know, I'm one of Somebody come with me with the word of admonishment. Uh-uh. That ain't for me. Oh, I got to pray about that. But it's in the word of God. You ain't got to pray about it. Just be obedient and do what he said. When somebody come up and say, Father said you need to be holy. Girl, I am holy. No, not with your attitude. God said you need to be righteous. Hmm. I'm already righteous. No, you're not righteous unless you're in him. He's the only righteous one. There's none righteous. No, not one outside of Jesus Christ. No. No. He said we need to be faithful. Father always said be faithful. When we're not faithful and we're serving other gods and we're doing this and we're doing that and we're accepting other stuff into the assemblies of God. Mm. Oh, hallelujah, God. We're not faithful unto him. We are faithful unto whatever we accept that's not of God. Because we're putting it over him. But Father knows best. He said, I'm going to deal with that. And we can sit here and we can, we can, we can, we can sing, we can shut down, and we can pray, think we praise in God and we are holy and we are righteous. And God said, sin will be punished. He said, there's a way to see right on the man, but the end thereof is death. So I stand before you today, church. And let you know that sin must be punished. It will be dealt with. God is a holy God. You talk telling people about holiness. I'm not, I ain't worried about it. That ain't for me. You start telling people about sin. Father said, <laughs> now I know I'm going to mess up. I mess up every day. I messed up since I walked in this assembly. I messed up. Well, it was a thought. Or maybe a word that I said to somebody. Or a deed that I did on my own. A sin. And God did not tell me to do it. It's sin. But we need to understand something, church. Is that our Father knows best. A Father is, oh my God. When we really truly get the revelation of what and who a father is, whoo, we'll come up under that banner of love. Because we'll know that he's there to protect us. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 6, and I want you to read that. These are the scriptures here. 5, 6 through 11, we looked at the word watch. In the Greek, it's 11, 27. And I said, okay, God, what does that mean? The word watch mean... Keep and stay awake. The Bible tells us to watch and what? Pray. See, Father, all along, He's given us instructions. All along, our Father is protecting us. There were some times when my kids was young, and my husband would say, Baby, do this. Or, Baby, we're not going to do that. Or, Baby, you know, this is best. Me being in my flesh, and I'm the queen. Not, I got a king in the castle too, but I'm just the queen. I, I ain't doing that. But he's the father of those children. He knows best. He's a, he's a protector. So everything that God has asked us and told us to do is for who protection? Our protection. He sees the beginning, and yet he always sees what the end. He sees those that who what are in between. Father knows best. Not knowing if I would not have repented and, 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 and gave that thing to my husband. I don't know where my sons would be this day. I don't even know. Because of my rebellion, because of my disobedience. Yet he was my husband, but yet he was a man of God. And he knows best for your household. 
he knows the best. We also shared that how God is revealing secrets to the prophets, Amos 3, 7. God said, I'm revealing secrets to his, I'm telling the church if you don't get nothing else, God is revealing his secrets to the prophets. He's speaking to the pastors. He's speaking to the what? Teachers. He's speaking to the evangelists. He's speaking to the apostles. He's speaking to his anointed. He's speaking to the church. He's speaking to his people. He's saying, let he who has an ear, what? Hear what the Spirit of God is speaking to the what? The church. You ask him to fine tune your ear, and your heart, and your eyes. But if there is a, not a repentance heart in the house, you're not going to hear. You're not going to hear. But what do the repentance have to do with my ear? It has a lot to do with your ear. Because you're hearing other stuff when true repentance is not there. True repentance means that I'm, 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 if I'm walking towards something that God tells me that I, I'm, 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 not, I'm not supposed to do. I'm walking towards something that I'm not supposed to do and God said repent. And I truly repent to him. There's something happening on the inside of my heart because my father knows best. And he said turn, turn, turn. Now what I was headed toward was to hurt me. But God said no you turn, you go that way. I am your father. I know what's best for you. We talked about that. In Amos 3, 7, we know that God is revealing his secrets to his prophet. He said he would not do anything. He revealed the secrets to him. But a lot of times we don't want to receive the prophetic. A lot of times we don't want to hear what the seer is seeing. Or we don't want to interpret what the dreamer is dreaming. A lot of people have started dreaming. Hmm. But God is touching the hearts of pastors. He touching the hearts of his people. Because it's enough. Time is out for teaching religion. Time is in for teaching what? The truth. He's revealing. We also talked about how God has given us the tongue of the learned. Isaiah 50 verse 4. The tongue of the learned. I said, God, what do you mean? He said, when I give you a tongue of the learned, it's a disciplined tongue. It's the tongue of the disciple that I have discipled, said the Lord, because Father what, knows best. Father tells you what to speak by his spirit. I'm talking about spirit again. It's, it's, it's a lot of times when, you, when your kids know they're doing something wrong, they are sometimes run to mama, and, and mama will say, well, what did your father say? What did your daddy say? I, I, didn't, I didn't ask him yet. Huh. I'll let you figure that out. Because when the father speaks, he's speaking in the area of authority yet protection. That's where we should be as believers, as a church, as the assemblies, as we assemble ourselves together. But I think a lot of times we believe that God is not going to deal with sin. Hmm. I'll step on here and say, oh, sin will be dealt with. He's dealing with sin now. In the earth, he's dealing with sin now. Right now, God is dealing with sin. Men want to be women. Women want to be men. A lot of whoremongering and fornication and adultery. God will deal with it. Read about Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, he's a loving God. Oh, yes, he is. You can't take that away from him. But he's a just God. Nobody want to teach on the just God. Nobody want to teach on the holy God. He's holy. And he tell us, he said, you be holy for I am holy. Because being holy is going to cost you something and it's going to cost you some people. It's time, but it's right. 
That's why he said, straight is the way and narrow what? It's the way straight, narrow is the way, straight is the gate. That's why when we come through that gate, things are being cut off because we are being consecrated and sanctified and sanctification for what? Unto holiness, unto him. So we can't bring that stuff in. Are you perfect? No. Are we in these fleshly bodies? Yes, we are. But he still is our father. He still knows best. Well, what are you talking about, Sister Mitchell? What I'm telling you is that God is telling us that our task is always to watch and pray, be obedient, repent. God, he will, and he's already worked it out. What we're going through now, God already has worked it out. He already has worked it out, but we can't see that. Deep good fish. Are people dying? Yes. Are people who believe dying? Yes. Because he's no respect. Sin must be punished. And I'm not standing here telling you that I'm better than anybody else. Or that I don't mess up, that I don't sin. But God said in his word in Ephesians 5, 15 and 16, he said, listen, my child, you tell them that these days are evil. But I told you in Isaiah 26, I told you, he said, I told you, touch no unclean thing. Isaiah 40, 21 to 24. 2 Corinthians, 2 Chronicles 26 and 7. Colossians, or oh, some more scriptures is uh, Colossians 1, 16. God said, touch no unclean thing. Come from among them. Come out of Babylon. Come out of her. She's a harlot. Every sin that's in her separates us from God. That's why he said you can be in the world, but not what? On it. But oh no. I don't trust. If we don't trust God, I'm telling you right now, my sisters and brothers, if we don't trust God in everything, whatever he's allowing to come upon this earth today is affecting everybody. If we don't trust God, okay, trust in the man. Trust in the man. And then you won't be here to tell me about it, but uh, let me know how that worked for you. Let me know how that worked for you when you trust in man. Some men trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But we, me, and my house, I'm going to trust in the name of my God. The most high God. Yah, the true and living God. That knows all because he's sovereign. Sees all for nothing escapes him. Huh. He said, for the days are evil. He created all things. Nothing, nothing, nothing gets past him. He's the Lord of all and all over all armies. Over all armies. There's nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's nothing above him. He's it. He's the Lord of hosts. Lord of all. Woo, hallelujah. When we really get the revelation of that, it's a battle going on. But he's still the Lord of hosts. He's still conducting what he needs to conduct in the earth. Is there a cleansing and a purging going on? Yes. Is it for everybody? No. You might say, well, what is she talking about? Do what God tells you to do. Use wisdom. Me and my husband, we're using wisdom. Because according to society, we're in that age group. We obey in the laws of the land. We ain't stupid or ignorant. But God don't want us to be what? Ignorant of the enemy's what? Devices. He allows it for a what? A reason. Second Chronicles 7, 14, what do we say? If what? My people who 
are called by my name would humble themselves and do what? Pray. What you going to do, God? First thing you need to do is repent. Turn to your God. Stop doing those wicked things, those wicked ways. Turn to me, said the Lord. I'm your father. I know what's best for you. I want to protect you. Now I'm going to hear from heaven and what? Heal the land. Father knows best, my people. He's in control of everything. That's the other thing. If we don't get anything else, he is in control. Oh, fret not thyself because of evil doers. They will soon be cut off. But he said, I never seen the right. If you know you're the righteous of God in Jesus' name, God got a promise for you. That's a promise. I've never seen the righteous forsake another seed. What? Begging for bread. Tell your children about the true and living God. Though I can't minister to him, that's my son. He might not like me. Oh, but, mm. are you the father? Are you the mother? Hmm. We had to place people in the earth. If we don't start telling people, even our family members, about the love of God, surely some will perish. I do know, and I shared that with you last week, concerning me and a, a, a friend, very good friend of mine, I had a disagreement. We really did. And God dealt with me about that on the way home. The car just filled with pearls, just, just like the glory cloud just set up in my car. And God was talking to me on my way down the road of Cliffdale. He said, I want you to go back and I want you to apologize. That didn't sit too good with me because my pride was up. But God, I didn't do nothing. Hear me arguing with the God that created the heavens and the earth. And I'm saying, God, but I didn't do anything. That was all her fault. He said, go back and apologize. And I did. Thank God I did. It ain't because of that. It's because of the obedience. Father knows best. He had already sought down the road there, what was going to come and, and happen in that relationship that I have, first of all, with him, then that individual. Because, see, sometimes, and the majority of the time, for those who believe and for those who are trusting God, sometimes that we are the only seed that will go forth that God will plant in the earth. What do you mean by that, Sister Mitchell? You are a seed in the earth that God is using your mouth through his word, by the spirit, to plant into people who don't know him. So because of my attitude, it determined my, my attitude determined my altitude. And God brought me down low until I repented. So when I went back and I apologized, it wasn't what I said, it was how I said it. But now me and this young lady, we're the best of friends. Obedience is awesome. God can use that. Now, she respects me and I honor her and respects her. Father knows best. So do what the Father is saying. If he's saying repent as a nation, repent as a people, then let's repent. Now, we want to hear about the prosperity message. No, repent. We have accepted things that in the assemblies of God that should not be here, should not be there. Oh, uh, they going to be all right, but are you going to be all right? You're not doing what Father tells you. You know, you, you, I'm not saying being ugly with people. Remember, we have a tongue of the learned, Isaiah 50 verse 4. That's a disciplined tongue. But ain't no way in the world we can see sin stand right before us that the enemy is trying to use. I'm not talking about the person. Don't attack the person. But you go after the spirit of that thing. That deliverance will come to God's house. This is his house. This is his temple. Also, in the ultimate of understanding, we must also stay connected. Lord, how do I stay connected? Through repentance? Through obedience? All the time? I, 
You mean I got to repent all, all the time? Yeah. You mean this thing going to be a lifestyle? Yes. You mean I got to stay connected to the most high, the holy God? It, mm, all, all the time? I just don't like you repenting. But we trample on them so much. And thank God is not concerned about it. Our Father is concerned about it. What did he say to David? He said, a broken what? Heart. And a contrite what? Spirit. And David, I cannot deny you. Even though you was a whoremonger, even though you was a, 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 a killer on murder, <laughs> even though you was a, an adulterer, even though you had the lust, but you're still a man after my wife because you repented. He came to God and sat cloth and ashes. He knew he served a holy God. So that let me know that yet David was in the flesh, but he still was a man after God's own heart. He repented, my people. We serve a, a holy God. He's our Father. And so what else? How do I, how else? You know, in, in Matthew 4, 17, uh, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Don't think God ain't here in the earth. Now, don't think his spirit ain't moving throughout. He is moving in the earth. Oh, yeah. Oh, this, 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 this is the devil. This, yeah. No, God knows exactly what's going on. Father knows best. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is nothing the enemy can do that father don't know about it. Read Job. Father knows best. But what is he doing, Sister Mitchell? He's lying on her. He said, I'm getting ready for a pickup. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. We got to understand something. You got to see this thing in the spirit. I had a dream the other night, that thing that blew my mind. We are getting ready, the body of Christ, the church, the believers, the people of God. He is getting ready for a pickup. Oh, when is he going to do it? I don't know. But I know he's revealing. I know he's sending messages. I know he's sending warnings. Hmm. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, God, what are you saying? Why did John the Baptist preach? Repent. Because in those days, and even in these days, they, the people were wicked. And he wanted them to be repent because he knew that Abba, our Father, who is our Father that knows best, knows all about us. He knows best. I know it ain't a, a juicy fruit message, but it's what God put on my heart. Because in these times, in these last days, oh, he's coming. <laughs> he's coming. You know, the other morning I was doing my devotion, and Father, I told me, he said, I want you to go to Isaiah 38. I think it's Isaiah 38. Turn, turn right there with me. It's concerning Hezekiah when he was going through his sickness. And he told Hezekiah to do something. But Hezekiah, he did it. And we know what happened from there. It's in the very first verse where the prophet Isaiah came to uh, Hezekiah. Yeah. In those days, I'm in Isaiah 38, verse 1. In those days, Hezekiah was what? Sick unto what? Death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him. Came unto who? Isaiah. Now remember that Isaiah was sick. God was, had him on the fishing line and he was what? He was reeling him up. No 
okay? And said unto him, thus, now Isaiah wasn't speaking on his own. He said, thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. <laughs> Set thy house, what? In order. Say it out. Let's say it out right there. Let's say it out right there. <laughs> God said to us today, a lot of us in the body are sick and dying and don't know it. And this is a word. I believe that this is a word even unto today. Get your house in order. Touch no unclean thing. Come from among them. Come out of what? Babylon. Stop your sin. Get your house in order. Now, I, say, I mean, uh, 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 Hezekiah believed the prophet of God because he, that day I said, whoo, he was face to face with God. You remember I told you God is revealing his secrets to the prophet. God ain't stopped. He, God is, has not stopped talking to his people. He's not. For those who have a relationship with him, he ain't stopped talking to them. He's still speaking. Whether it's in dreams, whether it's through relationships, even with other people, men and women of God. But let's read on. What happened? What did Hezekiah do? In order for thou shall die and not live. That's what the prophet will tell you. Then Hezekiah. <laughs> Because when God speaks something, you're going to know. How can you tell true prophets? Because when they speak something on the orders of God, you will see it, shall it come to, a, to pass. That's how you know they are among us. Surely you're going to die, Hezekiah. Hezekiah. That didn't set too well with Hezekiah. So he began to get before God. Hey, God! <laughs> That's where we need to be today, church. That's where we need to be today. Every day, I had cried out to God for repentance. For myself, for my family, for this nation, for this world. Because there's a lot of innocent people leaving here that don't have to. That don't have to. But we have not done what God has called us to. Father has said, you tell them about me. That because you are who you say you are, that don't mean your mission has changed. What did Hezekiah do? Hezekiah, he turned his face toward the wall and he, what? he prayed. Come on, come on believers. Come on Israel, we need to turn our face toward God and believe who and pray unto the Lord and he said no, no. it sounded like a bothering thing that Hezekiah had with God he was talking to God see God don't mind you coming to him in your anger he don't mind you coming to him saying God from what I know I did this from what I know God I, I've done everything that I, I know I, I've heard you tell me to do because you are my father you know what's best God I've done all of these things Lord God and what did Hezekiah what did Hezekiah say? He said, and said, remember, O oh Lord, I beseech thee. In other words, Lord, remember, remember this, God, I'm calling unto you. I beseech thee, God. In other words, God, hear what I'm saying, Father. Not that you have to, but hear my cry. I have walked before thee in truth. Woo! Mm. That's why the lies and the deception cannot stand and stay in the assemblies of God. We got to walk before God in truth. God knows whether we're walking in truth when we come together. He knows. But we'll sit right down and look no lie dead in the face and know that girl is in an adulterous situation. That man is fornicating. No, I, I can't. No, no, God. I, mm -mm. They might leave the church. 
This is where God is given. I'll say this because I know this is what God is speaking to my heart. When we do come back together in the assemblies and get assemble ourselves together of those in like faith and belief that the word of God says, some ain't gonna come back. Because see, God is shifting some things <laughs> in the body. Because truth and righteousness and holiness and faith will dwell where? In his house. Don't think that they, the same way he's sending us out now into our home where he's just shut the door, put the blood over your lintel. Ain't that amazing how we now in Passover? The same way that he sent us out. Go home. Shut your doors. Isaiah 26, 20. And when we come back together, hallelujah, everybody ain't gonna come back. Why, God? They don't want the truth. They don't want to do the truth. They don't want to walk the truth. They don't want to know the truth. I ask God every day, Lord, I thank you for your discernment. I receive it, God. Fresh wind, fresh fire, fresh anointing. Every day, God, give me your eyes that I may see what the enemy is doing to your people. Finish up there. He called out to God. He said, Lord, I walk before thee in truth and with what? A perfect heart. A perfect heart. And I have done that which is what? Good. In whose sight? God's sight or man's sight? Thy sight. A lot of times, all the time, Father knows best and he said, now I see that. Do what's right in what? My sight. I know it's tight, but it's right. Somebody got to say it's right. Do what's right in his sight. Man ain't going to like you when you tell him the truth. The word of God going to draw them or in a what? Repel them. And Hezekiah, he wept and he soared. He cried out to God. And we know the rest of the story. God gave him how many more years? He lived on. But the prophet, the, 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 the prophet said, you're going to die. Can we say mercy? <laughs> Can we say grace? <laughs> There's some people I know to this day have cried out to God. They, they, they had that virus and they cried out to God. I said, now, you cried out to God for a healing. You better keep talking to him. Don't think just because God has healed your body, it was your medication, it was that. I'm not telling you not to take your medicine. But what I'm saying to you, God, Jehovah Rapha, He is our healer. He knows best. And we go back in the same time. But God, if you just get me through this. Come on, church. We got to get out of house and home. This is a temple. This is a temple. It don't belong to me. It don't belong to my husband. Do you not know what is that? First Corinthians uh, three nineteen. Do you not know that your body, what God created here, is the temple of the who? The Holy Ghost, the Ruach of the mm, High Ecclesia. This, not him. This is the temple of God. Hey, God, I thank you. And every temple is not chosen if it can't line up in the holiness and the righteousness of God. Father knows best. He said, I want that one, I want that one, I want that one. Why? Because he knows. We are the temple of God. And Father knows best. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Stay connected. 
We stay connected also by what? Having a relationship with God and yes, his people. Oh, I don't need nobody. Yeah, you do. If you confess that you are the body, you are the body of Christ, and you think you're the whole body by yourself, hey, read your Bible. You are connected. I don't care what country you're in. Jesus Christ is your Lord. You are connected. Has God forsaken his people? No. But you are connected. And we can't put nobody together. That's the part of responsibility, not ours. Hallelujah. Repentance, obedience, relationship helps us to stay connected. We can't forget the love of God. Helps us to stay what? Connected. A real, true, and relationship with the Most High God will always lead us to a kingdom mindset. Write these scriptures. Romans 12, Romans 12, and read Romans 1 and 2. We have to present. We have to transform. And I'm, I'm just so tired of people. Oh, God ain't through with me yet. It's because you won't get on the table and die. You won't submit. You won't repent. I said we, myself to include. The mindset, Philippians 2, 1 through 5. A kingdom mindset, a relationship. Now we got to stay connected to the Father because the Father knows best. Which takes us to the true com communication, which is prayer. And prayer will always lead you to the truth. The truth will speak to you. Because Father knows best in the name of Jesus. He's in control. Hmm. Where we mess up at church, believers, is that we compromise. I know it's tight, but it's right. I can get this, get this off me, but just because I got on eggs. We compromise. We compromise. And we, 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 we. It's the way God removed the tongue of the line. God has given us the tongue of the line, a discipline, a disciple talk. We don't have to always holler and scream, Hey, you come out of it! No, 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 no. Hear how he's speaking it. Listen to him. How is he saying it? And then whatever, or whoever he got in front of you, whatever you hear him saying, how he say it, that's how you say it. That don't mean that you don't have the power and the authority. The power and the authority is not you, it is him that speaketh what? To you to speak it what? Through you. That's why when the anointing come on God's people, they begin to transform. God, things are being what? Renewed in them. Their mind is which what? Changing. It, it ain't their words, it is, it's the word of God. And when he speaks to us, with the tongue of the learned, there's power and authority, even in correction. We don't want to be corrected. We want this Superman thing. We want this pride thing. We want to strut like a, a, a bold peacock. No. Remember the wheat and the tad grows together. The tad, he stands straight up. He's prideful. But the wheat, it bends. I pray everybody wrote that scripture down in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. That's, that's the point of scripture. I've been seeing that scripture a whole lot. And I'm going to say this because it, it, God has given this in my heart. There's a lot of people out there, whether they're on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, they're prophesying. They're, they're doing this and they're doing that. But let me tell you something, my sisters and my brother. Hear what God is saying. Discern the times. He said, there will be false prophets that arise up in these end days. 
They will. But when the true prophets of God rise up, the false ones have to sit down. They have to hush. They have to be still in the name of Jesus. They have to be quiet in the name of Jesus. Because their tongue is not learned and it's a lying tongue. It's a lying spirit. Hmm. I'm telling you. Don't listen at everybody you see on, the, on, this, on this media these days that they are doing this and doing that. You better hear what God is saying for your sake. He said, you go in and shut your door. He didn't say, I'm going to speak to you about this. I'm going to speak. No, you shut your door and you get before God and you cry to God. We got a lot of things going out there trying to get in our ear to our spirit. Get in your word and you read the word of God. Read your Old Testament. Read the New Testament. You can always line up true prophet and prophetic with the word of God. God don't change. He said, I change what? Not. Malachi 3, 6. I change not. I am God and I change what? Not. So come on, people of God. It's a new sheriff in town. But it really ain't. <laughs> That's what they want you to believe is a new sheriff in town. But it really ain't. <laughs> he been there what? All the while. And his bed is shot. He said, a broken heart and a contrite spirit, I cannot deny my question. And I'm finishing up here. He said, Lord, is our heart, we the people of God, Zion, is our heart broken for you? Is our heart broken for the sinner man, woman, boy, or girl, the drug addict, the pro? Is our heart broken for the homeless, the sick? Is our heart broken for you? Uh, you want to see the lame walk? You want to see the dead rise? Allow God to break your heart. A little brief testimony. I was coming home from work again from Fort Bragg. And uh, I saw this homeless man. He was pushing a buggy. And I prayed a prayer just that instant. I said, God, give me the eyes that I can see him how you see. And he did. And ever since then, my sight has been changed. When I look at people who are homeless, when I look at a girl or a woman, I did, a young boy or set in their body, I don't see them in, in that state. I see them how God sees them. I see them through the love of the eyes of God. So is our heart broken? For that drug addict or that prostitute. Some of us have them in our family. Is my heart broken? For my sister or for my brothers? Is my heart broken? Because when your heart is broken, when our heart is broken, watch God. You're going to go forth and you're going to lay hands on the sick because you know it's not you. It is he that works for through you. Deliverance have come to your house that somebody else can be delivered by the Spirit of God. The lame will get up and walk. Those who have turned their back on God will come back. So is our heart broken for God and the things of God? I saw something. Somebody was being... I guess it's funny or whatever, but anyway, it, it kind of made me thought. He said, 
Where's the where's the uh, the preachers that are uh, 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 healing people that go around laying their hands on people? Ain't nobody laying hands on people no more. With Corona, why why ain't why ain't they laying hands on the people? Do we have a heart issue? Is there a heart issue? That made me think. I said, whoa. God, you can go up in the inner hospital and say, hey, hey, everybody, get up. Hey, y'all don't want shit. Get up. Then we have an overhaul and a whole thing, a whole lot of what? Ventilators. Because <laughs> they got the breath of God, the spirit of God in them to rise up, heal. We, we, we can't see that, Kim. I can see it. Because that's how powerful and mighty is our God, our Father. Because He knows best. He can do that. But our heart got to be right. To see the lame walk. Even the dead in Christ, those who are dead in their sin, rise up. In my closing, Father knows best. What our Father has spoken about you, about the church, is a truth, not a fact. Facts will change, truth will never change. No one can change his truth. Why? Because Father knows best. No one can change your identity or your name when you're connected to the Father because it's the truth. Why? Because Father knows best. He cannot lie. John 8, John 10, 28. No one can pluck you out of his hand, he said. He is the beginning where there is no end. Ain't no end in him, and ain't no. <coughs> we say, oh, well, where did God start from? Hey, when you, you let me know, when you find out, let me know uh, how that's working for you. He's the beginning where there is no end. He's the Alpha and Omega, whatever and whoever he chose, he chose. Deuteronomy 7, 6, and 9. For God's glory, Father knows best, says the Lord. But we have to know in the name of Jesus. The Father says he loves thee and he blessed thee. Deuteronomy 7, 13. He states that thou shalt be blessed above all. Deuteronomy 7, 14, says the Lord. Father knows best. And what he has said, what he has spoken, it will and it shall what? come to pass. But we got to believe it. Our Father said, come on, Zion, he is not forsaken you. He's not abandoned you. Said the Lord, Psalms 94, 14, Father knows best. He cannot lie. Nor does he change his mind. Numbers, what, 23, 19. Those who are wondering, he said, come on in. In the name of Jesus, he said, come on in. Come on in, come on in. God created all things without him. There was nothing made. Father knows best, John 1, 3. The father gave his best because he knows best. You are my best, he said. But look, and I know sometimes in our call of mind we can't even try to hear what I'm saying in the spirit. Father knows best, so he gave us his best. Who is his best? Jesus. Am I right? So, Father knows best and he gave us his best, so he gave us himself. <laughs> hey! He gave us himself, yet yeah! he's on the throne in glory. And I know some Bible scholars, they can't, they can't, wait a minute now, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
He said, well, in reading the scripture, he said, I and my father are what one. John 10, 30. John 3, 16, for God so loved. And when you go to John 10, 30, read all the way to 38. Father knows best, so he gives us his best, his son. That's why he said, I and my father are one. I gave you my best. In other words, I gave you myself. I let it all figure that out. He also said, he said, Father knows best. He gave us a great shepherd, a great shepherd for his sheep. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant, Hebrews 13, 20. Don't get caught outside that secret place now. Psalm 91. If not, you're going to go to touching stuff that's unclean. When you're outside Psalms 91, it's a secret place. He said, you're going to go and you won't repent. You're going to get a pure spirit of pride. You won't pray. You won't watch. You won't listen. You won't study. You won't obey. You won't commit to me, said the Lord. And then you're going to stay in Egypt. And you're going to have Babylon. Father knows best because he said he would never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13, 5. Father knows best. I want to read you something and then I'll be finished. I'm going to read you this word that God gave me first. He said, there's a power and a powerful force in knowing who you are as the church as the body of believers, as the people of God. You just don't come on your own. And you don't come alone. There is a heavenly host that is accompanying you. <laughs> Woo! There is a prominent promise that has sealed you. Woo! There is a covenant that has been given unto you. And the true and living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that have called you and chose you. He has showed you his mercy and his grace endureth forever. He's given you his dunamis power to let you know that his grace is sufficient. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. For surely his mercy and his, his goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life. Uh, uh, Psalms 23, 6. And I call them the twin towers. They don't operate out of each other. He said you can live by repenting. But the Father said now. You can live by repenting. Turn to what? The true and living God in the name of Jesus. Repent. 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 Trust God and know that he is your father. And he knows best. You know, from the last two to three years, God has been giving us words through the pastor, whether it's in our Sunday school, and to, through all the leaders uh, in this assembly. And I was going over my journal, and I would look at because I always go back and I study the scriptures that the uh, pastors and the elders give us when, when they teach. And this is what God is. It's, it's a questionnaire, yet and still is a revelation. He said, myself to include, we as the body of believers of the church need to repent sincerely. Sincerely. In other words, turn away from. Can we stay focused and on course by being activated in the truth? Now, all, everything I'm telling you here is topics that we have been taught. Can we stay focused, he said, and on course by being activated in the truth? As we walk by faith and not by sight. Hmm, that was Brother John said. What happens if your ship sinks? <laughs> That's the day. Can you tell? <laughs> Can you yet tell the truth even when your ship is sinking? Can, Can you believe God is your keeper and keep the faith? Pass the word here. Even if the way of wilderness get dusty or cloudy, 
Can we yet tell the truth? Even if you are rejected? <laughs> Woo! Can we still preach Jesus <laughs> and be totally at all in? <laughs> That's what he told me. Can we be separated? Can we separate ourselves? Come from among them, be holy as he is holy, and touch no unclean thing? Do we believe his promises? Do we really believe? Do we really believe, church, his promises? Do you really believe that Father knows best? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you now for this word. Lord, ultimately, we know that you are truly and fully in control of everything that we're going on. We still pray and thank you, Father, for the covering. Thank you for the blood. Thank you, Father God, for just speaking to us and speaking through us. And we thank you for the revelation that you've given your people, your church. We thank you, Father God, for those that truly believe you, who are standing, who are, who are seeing, who are prophesying truth. We thank you that our heart is broken for you and your people. We thank you, sir. And Father, I pray right now, Lord God, that anyone who is under the, can hear my voice, but hear your words in truth, God, that they don't know you, even through the, 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 the waves of this recording, God, if they don't know you. God, I don't know who this would touch, but I do know one thing. Your doors are never shut that they can come in right now. They can fall on their knees right now, Father, and ask you to come into their heart. Be their Lord. And accept you as their Lord in the name of Jesus. God, we just thank you for what you've already done. And we thank you, Lord God, the seeds that you have sown uh, through, even through me today, Father God, that you, Lord, would send forth laborers, Lord, to water. But, Lord God, we know that only you can bring the increase. We give you all the glory and all the honor, Father, and we say, be thou glorified, God. For we do have a broken heart and a contrite spirit. As your servant David, Father, he could not be denied. And we ask that you hear our prayer. As your people humble themselves and turn to you, Lord, and turn from our wicked ways. We say thank you, sir, that truly is truly your mercy and your grace. It's nothing about nothing else. It's all about you, Father, that you will heal the land. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless.